our journey. So you see that uh, we have been, when we are a seeker, first level of a seeker, the highest level, you have seen we talk about they are God gifted. And uh, we say in Eastern wisdom that it is because of the previous life, you have done a lot of good things. You have continued your practices and it was carried forward in this birth. So you have the intense aspiration to change and realize uh, the ultimate. So we have seen a lot of masters since their uh, birth. Uh, they, were, they had the intense aspiration. And like Swami Vivekanand, who lived only until 37 years of age, and uh, remarkable evolution, his text and his teachings, he came to U.S. also in 1892 and 3. So like this, the second level of the seeker uh, demands two things. One is that they have to listen to these principles and personal effort means the practice. So one has to do the practice. If I don't do the practice with reference to the principle, then I don't get that level. The third level comes that I do, I do listen to it, I do practice, but still I do not progress. So that progress is related to the impurity of the mind. We have to purify the mind. You see what Lara was just talking about, that the people do not speak the truth. So it pertains. We take it in a very um, simple way. We say, oh, it's because of the impurity in the mind. And then we go dig deep inside our mind, our nature, our behavior, our attitude. So there are three levels of the seeker. So the third level of the seeker, one has to listen to it again and again. One has to do the personal effort. Simultaneously, one has to pay attention that how the mind should be purified. This purification of the mind has been dealt very deeply in all the text. So this is uh, uh, going to be the end of 2020. So that's why I picked up this topic uh, in a few weeks in the new year, pay attention in which category you are so that you can understand and you can continue the practice. So what is the mode of the practice? Shravanam, listen again and again. Check what principle we have discussed, recall and remember during the day. Then contemplate and reflect on it. So contemplation and reflection can continue with our daily activities also. Uh, as Lara is taking a sip of tea during listening. So that is the right, that is another way. You are doing all your activities, but in your mind, you are constantly working and thinking about it. And the third aspect to experience, we have to do the practice. Now, what should be the daily routine? in this new year. That will definitely change you in a few weeks. Start from before going to sleep. Leave all the desires of the world aside because all the desire also sleeps with the sleep. But then what should we do? Just for five minutes, imagine, visualize, you are a meditator sitting for three to just imagine maybe you're sitting for two three hours or you have left all the desires now your desire to know yourself and after that first you deeply relax yourself and before after waking up do the same thing for five to ten minutes 
that is fast. My master used to say uh, to the higher seekers, not to everyone, that, okay, when you visualize, you visualize before going to sleep that in the morning, the, as the sun will rise, I will also rise with a higher awareness, with a clarity to know my real nature. There are many ways to do it, but five minutes of doing this. Then another, pick up any principle in the morning, any principle that you remember. So that will help you to understand how much the mind has actually grasped, uh, has accepted this, te this teaching. Then just for five minutes, you listen to that principle, you start thinking about it. Now daily asking the questions even for five minutes, who am I? What is the world? What is the existence? How to live and work in peace and happiness, love and wisdom? Ask four questions all the time, as if you are a great seeker and finding the answers of four questions. Who am I? What is the world? What is the existence and how to live and work in this world? So what will happen when you are asking these questions and recalling the previous principles? Body will be settled in steadiness, relaxation. Mind will be settled in calm. Emotion will settle in poise. And then comes our topic that we have done last week and we will continue this week. Then comes the intellect must be settled in wisdom. If the intellect is not settled in wisdom inside, then the meditation does not succeed. And that is the word Gita uses, sthita pragya. So last time what we covered, the person, the seeker who is satisfied in himself, means in real self, by the real self, with real self, that is the meaning that his intellect is settled in wisdom. That was the first thing. So what happens? What happens when we are settled in the wisdom? Your mind will never forget in your attitude, in your thought, in your speech, in your action, the very goal of life. Now see, what is the meaning that you are satisfied with yourself? Your mind is not carried away by the objects of the world outside. Even if someone is make, saying you are crazy, the mind is not carried away by it. Mind is not carried away and dictated by the world. The world does not live in you, that becomes very clear. So your intellect keeps all the trouble of the day at a bay. Meditation is not just sitting with eyes closed and just absorbed and coming out and then we return with the same attitude, nature, negativity, reaction. No, that is not meditation. So what is going to happen when the intellect is settled in the wisdom? Do you remember the five states of the mind we discussed in the beginning? Uh, the chipta, the wandering state of the mind. Now, because the intellect is settled in the wisdom, the moment the mind has an object, the intellect will say, hold on, leave this object, don't worry. So your wandering nature will stop. You see that. Now, the mind is sitting completely in the body. That is tamsik guna. That is the state of forgetfulness will also be going away from you. 
then you will never complain that you are fatigued and tired. I have a lot of things to do. And when you are practicing meditation, the goal is very clear to the intellect, passed on to the mind, what will happen? The third subjective state of the mind will not be present. What that means? You are doing meditation and the mind is wandering somewhere during the practice of meditation. That is the third subjective state of the mind. So the mind will remind you, no, you have to do meditation. Now comes the second most beautiful. There are about 15, 20 verses on how the intellect should be settled in the wisdom. So I'm taking up second one, one more, and then we will go to Yoga Sutra. <coughs> so this master says, Dukheshu anu dignamanaha, sukheshu vigatsraha. So when the intellect is settled in the wisdom, then you are you never think that suffering suffering is there in the world is it is there in the world but you don't think you don't allow the mind to think about it first point second point the meditator now never gets affected or disturbed by the suffering so he gives a beautiful my master used to give a beautiful example have you seen the lotus leaves we have many lotus flowers in the Himalayas. <coughs> when the rain water drops on the lotus leaves, it does not touch. It does not become wet. It simply falls away. Similarly, our mind becomes like that. Anything that appears in the world it is not dictated by the world of suffering. Dukheshu anudegna manaha sukheshu vigat. I do not get elated, do not build big ego when I am receiving the pleasures from the world and I do not get upset if the suffering uh, comes from the world in my life. I maintain the equanimity. I am not affected. Why I am not affected? Why I should not be affected? Now see, that part, that understanding should be placed in the intellect. Have you seen somebody who is doing a little work or no work, gets a million dollars? And we continue to do the hard work <laughs> and we don't even get a couple of thousand dollars. Sometimes we claim that you see that this guy is so much crazy and he is enjoying his life. I am so much honest. I have an integrity and I don't, <laughs> I don't have even the minimum basic necessities of my life. That we see, that we see everywhere. So the master asks, the, gives the answer that this body comes from the select impressions from the previous birth. Though those desires which were not fulfilled, uh, that has given this birth. And because of this birth, those desires will be exhausted if we live a life of meditator. That means what? I'm hardworking, but result is based on the previous karma. Previous karma. I'm working hard. I will continue to work hard, but leave the fruits of an action on the existence. In that way, I do not suffer. I do not get upset. Pain and the suffering caused by the prarabdha or the past impressions, favorable circumstances, unfavorable circumstances, pain or pleasure, they come from, they are the result of the past karma. Have you seen, you know, 
that a guy falls from the 10th floor and alive and you know a guy falls even while walking dies you know there are many unknown reasons so we all all these reasons are attributed to the prarabdha karma i will continue to do my duty i will continue perf continue to perform my work in the best possible way that is the ideal meditator i will continue to remain honest with integrity let others do whatever they want to do and i will accept the result as it is not to be affected by it whether it is pain whether it is pleasure so let us go little deeper into it pain and the sorrow has three factors first factor the thought of pain and sorrow and the cause is the object object pertains to the world so we talk about adi bhautik adi bhautik suffering adi bhautik means physical causes of suffering say the tiger attacks the snake bites someone slaps these are the physical causes can you avoid that yes we can avoid if the intellect is settled in the wisdom i can avoid that then there comes you know like the natural suffering the covid the storm the flooding the rain you know all these also causes the suffering and the third is mental mental means i get jealous i get attached i criticize i have a pride huh? all these can easily be avoided all these can easily be avoided that is what now see the cause thought of the pain and the sorrow comes because the mind is attached it has a liking and disliking so what the master is saying the meditator is a muni you know in india we normally 99% of the male has a big ego i am earning money that is why you are surviving tells his wife they have a big ego after all lady is also doing a work at home no no but without money how can you survive i should be surviving if i live somewhere else without you so we do have those egos everywhere that needs to be dropped the intellect must be settled in wisdom so krishna is using the word muni muni mind so muni the word appears to easily translated as the word monk but who is a monk who remains silence inside and who is highly active without getting fatigued outside in the world so the first meaning of muni so he i i was thinking a lot about that that why he uses this vitarag bhay krodha sthitadhi muni uchyate that meditator Ah, drops through the intellect he drops the attachment and detachment likes and dislikes and the anger and the greed that man of wisdom is settled in the intellect is known as muni muni monk so when i found out this meaning of the word muni muni means the silence inside why silence inside there is no attachment detachment there is no liking and disliking inside outside if the sun comes come on my dear son i love you daughter comes honey comes so you are doing all your activities outside in the world 
as if you have to perform your duty and responsibility. But without any attachment inside the head, without any detachment inside the head. So there is no liking and disliking. So when there is no liking and disliking, the mind remains purified. Now see why the last point, and then we will start our meditation practice. Why should not be I why shouldn't be I attached? Why should not I be detached? Now relate this to the five subjective states of the mind. As long as your mind is attached or detached, what will happen? You have a problem of wandering mind. You have a problem of obsession. You have a problem of distraction. You have a problem of oscillation of attention that will prevent you to succeed in meditation. One factor. As long as this mind is extrovert, moving outside with the first three subjective states of the mind, what will happen? Result is anxiety, excitement, fear, pleasure, pain, suffering will continue. Are you getting it? Uh, I basic topic was that how to start our journey in the new year. But the main topic was the how the intellect should remain settled in the wisdom. I hate you. What is that thought in the mind? What the intellect should do? Hatred. Leave it. And then see what happens to the mind. Mind calms down. How dare you say this? He was saying that I am crazy, but you are more crazy. Now see the intellect. Allow the intellect to work with the steady wisdom. That helps you to keep the mind away from those thoughts that causes the anxiety and stress and negativity. So that intellect helps the mind. Mind helps the body. And we always succeed in meditation. Have you seen this one part that we are learning? Is that meditation is not living in, just not uh, living with eyes closed. And after the meditation, we start living with the same attitude, behavior, reaction, anxiety. No. The master is saying this meditation should Remain present behind every thought, speech, action, personality, personal life, professional life, social life, family life. It means you are living your family life in meditation, with meditation, professional life in meditation, with meditation. So there is no gap between the material and the spiritual world. You bridge that gap. But that bridging the gap comes from when you are a sthit pragya, means the intellect is settled in the wisdom of the self. So when the intellect is settled in the wisdom of the self, the life changes. So we will practice and then we will share our experiences. <laughs>